Hi there! In this video, I am going to explain how confidence intervals work, but before you dive in, let me say that if you are not already familiar with how t-tests and z-tests work, go check out my video on these topics first. They'll give you the foundation you need to really make sense of what we are about to discuss. Ok, so back to confidence intervals. Let's break it down. Imagine you are a detective and you have just interviewed a sample of witnesses to estimate how tall the mysterious suspect is. The average height from your sample is 175 cm. But you know, deep down, that you are not 100% sure that's exactly the suspect's true height. People make mistakes, right? So, instead of just saying the suspect is 175 cm, you might say, I am pretty confident that the suspect's height is somewhere between 173 cm and 177 cm. That range, that's the confidence interval. In short, the confidence interval gives you a range of values where you are reasonably confident that the true population mean lies. It's basically like a safety net for your estimate. And how confident you are, that's up to you. Usually we talk about 95% confidence intervals, but you can also go for 90, 99% or whatever you feel like. And remember that a 95% confidence level means that if you were to repeat your sampling process a hundred times, about 95 of those samples would produce intervals that capture the true population value. Now, how do you calculate a confidence interval? Well, you start with your sample statistic, let's say it's the mean, and then you figure out the margin of error, which is essentially the wiggle room around your estimate. And the margin of error depends on two things. Firstly, it depends on your chosen confidence level, where a higher confidence means a wider interval because you want to cover all your bases. And that's given by the critical value, which depends on your confidence level and whether you are using a z-test when you know the population variance or a t-test otherwise. And again, you take this value from the z-table if you are using a z-test or the t-table if you are using a t-test. And secondly, the margin of error depends on the variability in your data. If your data is all over the place, your margin of error grows. That's given by the standard error, which is equal to the standard deviation of your sample or your population divided by the square root of n. Now, let's bring this back to life. Suppose you survey 20 people about how many hours they sleep each night and their average sleep time is 7.5 hours, with a sample standard deviation of let's say 1 hour, which gives us a standard error of 1 hour divided by a square root of 20, which is equal to approximately 0.224. Now, we need to find the critical value. For a 95 confidence interval, we look into the t-table for the two-tailed distribution. And yes, usually when computing the critical values for confidence intervals, we are using two-tailed statistics, because the confidence interval is designed to capture the true population parameter within a range that accounts for uncertainty in both directions. And if we do that for a df equals to 20 minus 1, which is equal to 19, we get a critical value that is equal to 2.093. So the margin of error is equal to 0.224 multiplied by 2.093, which is equal to 0.468. So our confidence interval will be equal to the mean plus minus this value. As a final note, I would like to emphasize again that the confidence intervals don't guarantee the truth. If your 95% confidence interval misses the true value, that's just bad luck. It happens about 5% of the time for a 95% interval. And that's simply the nature of probability. So here you have it. Confidence intervals are your way of saying, here is my best guess, plus a range of reasonable uncertainty. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye!